Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, so, like Simon said, I'm Leah, uh, and this is Mr. Border Radius. And he looks like a character just like out of, out of a children's book, because pretty much every developer doesn't think Border Radius is cool. However, I'm here to prove you wrong. And not only is Border Radius really cool right now, but it will also become in incredibly cool in the future with backgrounds and borders level four, if any of the stuff in there actually makes it to browsers. So the reason most people think that border radius is not cool is because they just see the tip of the iceberg, which looks a bit like this. You specify a single value, you get some rounding. The, more, the bigger the value, the bigger the rounding, and as, uh, the value just specifies the radius of a circle in each corner. And many people also know that we can, do, uh, we can specify different radii per corner. For example, uh, by providing two values or three values or even four values, they go clockwise starting from the top left. However, this is, this is easy stuff, right? What happened here, for example? It, it, looks, no, it, it looks like an ordinary case of border radius. Uh, we have a 900, pixels, uh, a 900 pixels radius for the top left corner, 90 pixels for the, for the rest of the corners, which means to follow this border radius, we need 990 pixels total. But we only have 540 horizontally and 420 vertically. So where is all this border radius going to fit? So browsers actually have to do some adjusting because they can't obviously follow this. So the way they do this sort of adjusting when you have a border radius that doesn't fit is that they try to maintain the ratio between the different radii. So in this case, even though the top left radius is not 900, it's, it's actually 381, it is still 10 times as big as the top right one, which is 38 pixels. In the spec, this is phrased as, when the sum of any two adjacent border radii exceeds the size of the border box, UAs must proportionally reduce the used values of all border radii until none of them overlap, which just means if the border radius doesn't fit, you just scale it down proportionally. And this is why uh, we can just specify a really large value to make circles, and it doesn't matter how big that value is. For example, it doesn't matter if it's 900 or whatever, it still stays a circle because it's scaled down. And here's a cool demo which shows the number of different radii we can make, uh, of different shapes we can make, just with what I've shown so far. However, the, rabbit, the border radius rabbit hole goes deeper than that. So here we wanted to make an ellipse. But an ellipse is not possible to make through parts of a circle, which is what I've shown so, I've shown so far. However, if we use a slash, we can specify different horizontal and vertical radii. So effectively, we can make shapes out of parts of ellipses instead of parts of circles. So if we make this value bigger, you can see how it works. And if it's exactly the same as half of our width and the vertical one is half of our height, we have an ellipse. So the next logical question is, can we make half an ellipse? So the problem with this ellipse is that it's not very flexible. If we increase the width, you can see that it's not an ellipse anymore. It's a weird sort of cylindrical shape. And of course, we can change this to reflect the new width, and it's an ellipse again, but it's not very portable, is it? However, border radius also accepts percentages. And percentages are uh, resolved ba uh, based on the corresponding dimension. Horizontally, they're based on the width, and vertically, based on the height. And since they're the same number before and after the slash, we don't even need the slash anymore. So now we can just change the dimensions, and it just naturally works. So half an ellipse would be, because, it's because this half ellipse is symmetrical horizontally, it's just 50%. And then we have a really large radii for the top corners, in fact, 100% and zero for the bottom ones. And there you have half a very, a very flexible ellipse. So the next question is, can we make a quarter ellipse? A quarter ellipse just has a 100% radius in the, corner, uh, in, the part where, in the corner where it's rounded, in this case, the top right corner. So if we specify 100% horizontally 
uh, 100% for the top right, uh, left corner and zero for the other corners for both horizontal and vertical radi radiuses, there we have a quarter ellipse. It doesn't matter what dimensions we have, it's still, it's still flexible. And we don't even need both parts because they're the same, so we, can, we don't even need a slash. So the next question is, can we make a quarter ellipse? No, sorry, we can't. Not with border radius, at least. You can still use SVG. But here are a few more shapes you can make with border radius. And these are just a few examples I came up with last night. There are many, many more you can use border radius for. Uh, this demo is a little old, but I like it because it shows uh, how Simurai used regular curves and different border radius uses to make uh, buttons that actually look good. And I've used regular curves and border radius to make, the, to make pebbles that look more natural and all sorts of things. And you might be wondering, why should we go through this and not just use images? The cool thing about border radius is that it's also animatable. So we can use transitions and animations on it. So here, when, I'm, when I hover over it, it switches from this radius, which is, if you remember, used to create half ellipse, to 50%. And you can animate between any two radii. I can even convert this into an animation. And have it run continuously without even me having to hover over it. And we can even add a bottom offset and make it look like it's jumping, which I think is kind of cool. You can make all sorts of different animations with border radius. And there's a lot of untapped potential there, because most people don't even think to animate border radius. However, at some point, you reach a point where you need to add content in your dev that you've been using all, this, all these cool border radii on it. And as you can see, the situation is not great. Text wrapping doesn't follow border radius. In, in smaller radii, you can sort of use padding to help with that. And the bigger the radius, the bigger the padding. But that also reduces the space you have for the text. So unfortunately, right now, there's no solution for this, but in the future, we will have something, a property that's called shape inside. And if we specify content box, it just naturally follows the content box rounding. It's actually a little buggy in Chrome right now, because Chrome has an experimental implementation, but it's a bit buggy, as you can see, because it doesn't subtract padding from the rounding like it should. Um, this will be in CSS shapes level two. It was in level one, but it got deferred, unfortunately. And it will be really cool, because there's no other solution to this right now. Uh, at some point, you might need to use JavaScript to read back values of border radius. And you would expect, since border radius is a rather old property, you would expect browsers to be relatively uh, compatible with each other, right? I'm sorry, that's not the, quite the case. So assume we are running some simple JavaScript to get a reference to the element and then read back the computed style, um, in this case, uh, for border top left radius. So if you look at the code here, border top left radius is 100%, which will get resolved to 540 pixels horizontally and 420 pixels. However, because horizontally we have to fit in 100% plus 2Ms, and vertically, we have to fit in 100% plus 40 pixels, uh, sorry, plus 50%. The 100% needs to be scaled down. So the actual used values will not be 540 pixels horizontally or 420 vertically. They will be smaller. So what will browsers report back? Will they report back 100% that we specified? Will they report back the, the, the width and height values without scaling them down? Or will they report back the actual used values? So. What they do is that they actually disagree in that. So most browsers will return 100%, which is the value we specified. Firefox will return the actual used values, which is very useful, but different than what any of the other browsers do. I'm hoping that the other browsers will change to do what Firefox does, but it will probably be the other way around. And this is why I'm using Firefox for this talk, actually, because the values it returns are much more useful. Similarly, if we try to read back the, the top right radius, 
this one, which is two M's, what will the browsers return? Two M's? Two M's converted to pixels? Two M's converted to pixels and scaled down? So most browsers will just convert the, the M's to pixels and return that. Firefox will return the actual used value, which is smaller because it needs to be scaled down. So things are not great in that aspect. So I've showed you a little of what you can do with border radius today, but the future holds so many cool things for border radius. Because right now, in the draft for backgrounds and borders level four, there's a property called border corner shape. And obviously, many things will change in it before it makes it into an actual spec and into an actual browser. I'm hoping the name will change, because it's awful. And we're open to suggestions about that, by the way. So border corner shape allows you to change what border radius does. It still follows the size specified by border radius, but the shape of the corners is different. The default shape is curve, which is what you can do with border radius today. You can have bevel for cutout corners, and this doesn't just allow you to do cutout corners. It allows you to do all sorts of cool stuff. For example, rhombi would just be border radius 50%, or hexagons with just this. Or you can do triangles, like this. Or you can do trapezoids by specifying a fixed horizontal border radius instead of a percentage one, based one. And scoop is also pretty cool. By default, it makes this sort of shape, but it can also be exploited to do all sorts of cool shapes, like the star that looks like this. Notch is not as useful. It doesn't show now because I've specified 50%. So Notch is not as useful. It, does, it, cut out, it cuts out uh, rectangles from each corner. But it can be used for things like, I don't know, crosses, for example. So imagine the possibilities if we get border corner shape, especially since we'll actually be able to use different corner shapes per each corner. However, until then, since this is not in any browser yet, you can sort of emulate this effect by using gradients. Here I've used four gradients, uh, one for each quarter. You can see how this works if I change the color of this one to black, for example. So each of those gradients covers a quarter, and it's a linear gradient with an angle like this. And I can change the size of the effect by changing the position of the color stop. I've, I've used uh, the second color stop has a position of 0, so that it, 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 it automatically adjusts to 50 pixels or whatever I specify here. So I don't have to change two values. And this, will actually be, this would be much more um, usable if you turn it into a SAS mix-in, because I know it has a little repetition here. And you can use radial gradients. In the same fashion, uh, if I change this, for example, to black, you can see how it works. Or I can change this to green, whatever. And I can change the size. And they work the same way as the scoop border corner shape will. I know it's not perfect, but it's a way to do it right now without using any external images or anything. So that's actually about it. Thank you very much.